Canine love. There was a time in Africa when we held our customs, traditions, beliefs, and values in high esteem. Back then, Africans were not known to compromise their value system. The elders were custodians of our values. The West even had a word for it. They called it black pride. Over time, civilization crept in. We soon loosened our grip on high moral standards. Now, our beliefs and values are inundated with and determined by foreign concepts. Propensities once considered taboos in time past have been normalized. We may have crossed the perversion line to stoop so low to bestiality. 29-year-old Emily Mabau crossed that line when she exchanged marital vows with a dog. Although the affair did not gain much media attention, it indicates the deplorable state of our moral standards. In early July 2009, 29-year-old Ghanaian Emily Mabau said, I do, to an 18-month-old dog before a traditional priest in Aburi, Ghana. According to Emily, the dog has her late father's qualities. He, the dog, is kind, faithful, and loyal to my mom, and he never lets me down, Emily said. Emily has given up on men and is pretty convinced that all men are skirt chasers and cheaters. Emily's family wanted no part in the sacrilege she was about to commit and stayed away from the ceremony. The wedding took place before a priest and some curious villagers who were witnesses. This isn't the first case of a human-animal union. A few instances are Mark Matthews, who married his pony named Pixel in 1992. 18-year-old Ungura Alit married a cow after being caught having sexual intercourse with a cow. He claimed the cow had flirted with him. Alit and his new bride were ceremonially drowned in the ocean to cleanse the land according to the Pecurian ritual. A 41-year-old eccentric British millionaire, Sharon Tendler, married the love of her life, a dolphin named Cindy, at an Israeli resort in 2005. Another dog lover, Selvar Kumar, married a dog to avert a curse in 2007. I could go on and on. The African society is founded on one essential quality, harmony between life and our surroundings. Sadly, though, modernization and globalization has crippled our moral tenets. The gates have been held open for same-sex marriage for a long time now, but bestiality and object sexuality trends are distorting the meaning of the marriage institution. In the past, marriage was defined as an institution between a man and a woman. Today, that definition is no longer valid. How will they procreate and produce children? Will the dog perform conjugal roles as the husband? What will their children look like? Half human or half dog? Can she introduce the dog publicly as a husband? We cannot imagine what this new development means for our men. Are all men really cheats or is Emily's decision a result of frustration? Since she searched for a man with a father's quality but never found one? Perhaps she suffered countless heartbreaks and so opted for her dog. Perhaps she married the dog to end her loneliness. Could it be that we are really in the last days as the Bible says? Let us know in the comment section.